Welcome to part two. But before we start, look who's back. Yes, Allison has had a much needed break, and now she is ready to rock, so let's do this. Today, we'll be concluding our exploration of religion in games. Last week, we talked about how games feature the lore and the mechanics of religion, and today we'll be discussing how they deal with faith. To me, faith is the heart of all religion. It's something that many of us struggle with our entire lives. It's something that affects each of us profoundly, whether we have it or not. It has defined so much of our history, and it's one of the hardest concepts to wrap your head around. It's also one of the most deeply personal and profoundly emotional parts of our lives as human beings. And yet, video games don't explore the concept at all. We never see the priest without magic powers, the priest who has no tangible proof of their god, trying to reconcile their faith with a world where terrible things still happen to good people. We never see the scientist struggling to align reason and belief. We never live through the heartbreaking loss of faith, or the finding of faith when all else is lost, though we've come close to addressing it a handful of times. We've cut out from our medium all of the powerful moments and meaningful exploration that can be found in wrestling with the concept of faith. I mean, at the very least, we've had so many morality meters in games. If we've got to use this sort of binary system, wouldn't it at least be a little more interesting to have a faith skepticism bar rather than just one of good and evil? So, why? Why do we never touch on faith in games? Why is it somehow a more taboo subject than the extremities of violence or the notion of good and evil? It's hard to say, but if we're truly being honest with ourselves, it's due in part to the fact that within our community there is some hostility toward faith. And to be fair, people claiming to be of faith have shown us a fair amount of hostility as well in the past. But this is just silly. All reason is based on faith. All logical systems by necessity have to start with a group of postulates that have to be taken on faith. All of our math is built up this way, and all of our science relies not on exhaustive proof, but rather on simply being the most probable thing that hasn't yet been proven wrong. At the beginning of the 20th century, some very rational people, atheists, skeptics, and agnostics, believed that we were only one or two problems away from solving all physics, from completely understanding everything about how the physical world worked. They believed in Newtonian physics much in the same way that we today believe in our science, with certainty and conviction. And yet, within just a few short years, it was discovered that we were nowhere near solving physics, and that some of the premises they'd based their reasoning on, that we had had faith in, were dead wrong. Now we here at Extra Credits have deep faith in science. We will defend it fiercely and say without hesitation that it is one of the greatest, most ennobling properties mankind has. But we understand it to be just that, faith. The only difference between science and religion is that science takes faith as a starting point, whereas for religion, faith is the central tenant. And we can argue the merits of both approaches till we're blue in the face, but as a community, even if we've had bad experiences in the past with specific people claiming to be of faith, we shouldn't have a knee-jerk reaction to the concept of it, or reject it out of hand without being willing to explore it at least. In fact, because of its interactivity, we have perhaps the best medium there has ever been to explore faith in an honest and open manner. Not telling anyone what to do, but rather truly letting people work through the subject for themselves. This may be the one medium where we can get away from just telling each other who's right and who's wrong, and allow each side to walk a mile in the other's shoes. So we can't just reject faith as a topic for games to explore, even though that's pretty much what we've been doing to this point. And we can't be afraid of a backlash either, because anyone who rejects a serious, unbiased exploration of faith just because it's in a game probably wasn't going to buy the game in the first place. And on the most practical level, where we reject this theme, I think we cut ourselves off from some seriously epic games. So there you have it. Our exploration of religion and games. I hope breaking it down into three sections and exploring how games address the lore of religion, the mechanics of religion, and the concept of faith helped to provide some clarity on the topic, or at least gave you something cool to discuss. But please shoot us your thoughts, and pass along your suggestions for games that are doing this well. And with that, I just want to end with a quote from Einstein, as he was a man that kicked down the doors of faith for both science and religion, and yet was a man of great faith himself. The most beautiful and most profound experience is the sensation of the mystical. It is the sower of all true science. He to whom this emotion is a stranger, who can no longer wonder and stand wrapped in awe, is as good as dead. To know that what is impenetrable to us really exists, manifesting itself as the highest wisdom and the most radiant beauty, which our dull faculties can comprehend only in their primitive forms, this knowledge, this feeling is at the center of true religiousness. Thanks for watching and enjoy the holidays. We'll be taking the next couple of weeks off so we can rest up and hang out with the family, but we'll be back to our regular schedule on January 9th. See you then. Thank you.